and welcome back to the channel here we have a few parts that have been in storage for i want to say two to three years so it's about time we take them out and give them a good cleaning Now the best advice I could give you on this part right here is to pay careful attention to where everything goes, uh, how everything comes apart. If you have to take pictures, take video or whatever, you just want to make sure you remember how it goes back together. Here I'm checking out the rollers. There is a little bit of grit in them, but it's not too bad. So I think a real good cleaning is really going to help them. Uh, the good thing about the rollers is I don't see any flat spots or any type of pitting. So that's a really good sign. Now there's a lot of cleaning to be done here and I'm just going to brush over it real fast, no pun intended, because if I don't do it like this, it's going to be a three hour video of me just cleaning parts and nobody wants to see that. Now that I'm done with the first step of cleaning, I'm going to give everything a good soaking and brake parts cleaner. And I'd have to say that this is probably the most important step right here because it does the most work. After I'm done with it, I'm going to let all the parts air dry and just let them sit out until it's completely dry obviously. Now that everything is all cleaned up, it's time to give everything a fresh oil bath. So I filled up this cup right here with brand new oil and we're going to let all the parts sit in here, uh, preferably overnight. I let these parts sit for more than one night. And once I was done with the soaking, just take each part out and put them in their own individual uh, sandwich bag. And of course, keep everything organized. That's the whole point of the sandwich bags. I want to keep everything organized. I'm trying to put all of these rocker arms in the same exact location where they came off. In other words, I'm not trying to put, you know, a rocker arm that came off of the intake side on the exhaust side and vice versa. At this point, I have all of the parts cleaned, everything is oiled, everything is organized, so I know exactly where it goes. I actually have these bags lined up in the order that they're going to be assembled in. So, there's nothing else to do now besides put it all back together. This part can be a little tricky to assemble because the springs want to push everything apart. So I tried a few different methods such as standing it up and even laying it down. At this point you just have to try whatever works for you. Once you get everything put together you're going to want to use zip ties on the rockers to kind of hold everything together just like this. And it's really going to help when you go to put this whole assembly on your head. Uh, I'm sure there's an easier way to do this and I'm sure someone's going to leave a comment below but this is what I tried and it worked for me.
And once again, I'm using the coffee filters and brake parts cleaner to give the head one more cleaning before I put the whole assembly on top of it. Now, of course, it's going to get dirtier again with oil and assembly lube, but I figure why not. So this one scene right here is kind of funny to me because it's actually take two. The first time I actually put all of the rocker on assembly on top of the head and I forgot to install the lost motion springs which are the springs I'm putting in now. So that really sucks to have to take everything back apart just to put these springs back in it. But you definitely do not want to forget them. Now the biggest tip I could give you right here is as soon as you put the whole assembly on top of your head just go ahead and cut all of your zip ties off because it's impossible to get everything lined up where it has to be with the zip ties in place. Uh, it took me a little while to figure that out as you can see I cut like these first two off trying to get it lined up first but it's just not going to happen. This whole assembly pretty much has to go in as one big piece and the fact that there's so many moving parts just makes it really difficult. So you can see this is kind of like a time lapse where this footage is actually sped up to like 8 times its normal speed and it actually did take me a while to get everything lined up. But just keep on trying like I said remove all those zip ties immediately. Once everything is lined up and you just need to give it that little bit of extra nudge to fall into place, you could grab like a rubber mallet and just start giving it light love taps, don't go crazy with it. But at this point you should see everything fall into place. Here I have the set of cams that came out of the RSX Type S head and sure there's some rust on them and they're dirty and you know things like that but I really think if we get them into place and just get them into the rotating assembly that they're going to be cleaned up with all the friction and everything so I'm going to go ahead and give them a go and we'll just see how it works out. And of course, you know I'm just joking, so all you keyboard warriors out there, settle down. I can see you typing away already. Sorry, baby. I'll never do that again to you. We're going to get you some premium oil. Now, I did spend some time to polish this part right here, but you know what? I'm not really feeling it anymore, so I'm going to change it. Uh, that looks a lot better, and I hope it gives away just a little hint on what kind of camshafts I'm putting in this engine. I know you're not supposed to use an impact gun on camshafts, but I think we can all agree that these camshafts are pretty much junk at this point. So it doesn't really matter if I use an impact gun to uh, take the pieces that I need off of them. And here they are in all their glory. Aren't they beautiful? They're just like works of art. I feel like I could just look at these things all day. These cams were made to go in a K24 block with a K20 head, 12 and a half to one compression, and drag cartel caused this the ultimate street setup. 
it's gonna give the car that nice lopey idle uh, nothing too aggressive just enough to notice that there's something there and I'll tell you one thing I'm crazy excited about this now I didn't show this but once I pulled the cam gears off of the original camshafts I did give them a good cleaning with brake parts cleaner before I installed them on the new camshafts. And of course everything is going to get assembly lube before we put all of it together. So much assembly lube. The new camshafts are stamped with intake and exhaust so you don't want to mix them up. Honestly I'm not really sure if it's even possible to mix them up but in case it is possible to mix them up you just uh, really want to be careful here. In case you're wondering which cam cap goes where, they are labeled 1 through 5. And 1 is always going to be closest to the timing chain. They're also going to have a stamp on them of an arrow. And you always want that arrow pointing forward towards the timing chain. So as long as you pay attention to those small details, everything should be okay. Here I'm just using my stubby ratchet to snug all of the bolts down. I'm not really applying any force or anything like that. You want to follow the correct sequence when you're torquing everything down the spec. What's going on with this thing? What the hell is that noise? Holy shit. Where'd that come from? Ma! We got a weird fucking cat in here! Like I mentioned earlier, you want to follow the correct torque specs and sequence for this. Towards the left side of the screen near the cam gears, you're going to notice I'm missing two fasteners. And that's because I don't have the timing chain in place yet and there's a guide that goes there. So once I get the timing chain in place, then I'll put those two fasteners in. There's three bolts that have a slightly lower torque spec and I don't have them in place yet because honestly I cannot find them. So I'm going to have to source out these bolts from somewhere else. Here's the two bolts that I just mentioned and as you can see they hold down the timing chain guide. Now I'm going to remove this one to upgrade to one that's slightly longer. Uh, I'm not sure if it has any benefits but I figure while I'm in here I might as well change it and it looks like it'll do a better job at keeping the chain in place and maybe preventing it from skipping a tooth sometime. Now it's time to tighten down the cam gears and I'm trying to get the timing as close as possible. It's not necessary at this point but I figure why not. To prevent the camshaft from spinning you want to hold it in the center right here. There are provisions for it and as you can see I'm using a crescent wrench but you could also use a 24 millimeter. And that's it for this one. In the next video, I think we're going to be setting valve last and putting all the timing components on the engine. 
Uh, don't forget to hit that little bell. It's the only way you're going to get notifications after you subscribe. So if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And like always, thanks for watching.